What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. About one week ago, I told you I was gonna be doing an AMA video and that you could ask me any questions that you had and you guys did not disappoint. So let's answer your questions. Now, this isn't one of my typical videos where I am comparing something or teaching something. This is just you guys asking me questions. So this is gonna be pretty laid back uh, because for the most part, the people who are gonna be watching this one specifically will most likely just be fans of the channel. It won't be, you know, random people who are finding it in search. Uh, it's just gonna be the people who like, you know, what I have to say and have questions. And so this is gonna be pretty chill. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I like making these kinds of videos, uh, but I'm just gonna start at the very top of the questions again. I just said, you know, ask me any questions, personal or, you know, for, I guess, professional. And then I said, you know, if you really liked somebody else's question to upvote it. And so we got a lot of good questions to come. I'm going to start at the very top. And this is from Luke Baraus. I'm going to, it's probably not right. But uh, he says, if you had to choose between Python or R for the rest of your life, would you install Pandas or Matplotlib first? Uh, that's funny. On a serious note, where do you see yourself transitioning to next after your current role? That's a really good question. Um, you know, I, I will say that I have a lot of aspirations, if that's the right aspirations. I think that's the right word. I have a lot of goals, right, for my career, where I want to go. In terms of my next stepping stone, um, I may just take another data analyst role or, or maybe even a senior data analyst role somewhere. Um, maybe that's at my current company, that's at a different company, but I feel like either that or some type of managerial role would fit me best. Um, but I feel like I'm definitely mid-level, higher, maybe senior level. Um, you know, a lot of people and somebody, and this is gonna be asked later on, or ask if I'm gonna be doing like data scientist stuff, um, and I'll talk about that a lot more in depth when I get to that question because I kind of skim these really quick. My, I really do think though I'm going to probably go into more of like a senior data analyst role in my next, you know, position. Um, that's just my guess. But you know, eventually I want to get into management. I, I like working with people. I enjoy people, um, and I'm hoping that that tr I can actually make that happen. Uh, but we'll see. You never know how things are going to go. The next question is from Yash. Um, and he said, there are a couple of ways we can start learning data analysis skills, like starting with Excel or maybe with SQL and then Tableau, et cetera. So what are the most efficient way of putting it together and how much time to give to each of the tool to learn the skills? So basically what skills should you learn and like what's the priority and then how much time should you spend on each skill? It depends completely on each person. Um, I have my own personal preference. I've made a video about it. What I will say is I really like the order of SQL, Tableau, Excel, Python. And, and here's my logic of why. SQL is in a lot of technical interviews. It is also super important for data analyst work. And uh, I genuinely think that you can learn a lot of the basics. Uh, I mean, I have a whole series. You can learn the basics in like, like 30 minutes. Um, or at least you can understand the concept of the basics. Then you can practice and get better at it. I think that you can get up and running with SQL very quickly, and it's a huge boost to your self-confidence um, because, you know, when you're first starting out, you're like, am I going to make it? Can I do this? Like SQL is something where you're like, whoa, this is really cool, and I'm learning it very quickly. This is a good sign. I think Tableau is the same way. Um, Tableau has a big impact on your career, has, opens up a lot of doors, as well as it's not super crazy hard to learn. Um, at least the basics, you can learn very quickly. And it's all drag and drop. You're not writing code. You're not writing like scripts or anything like that. Um, and so if you learn SQL and then you learn Tableau right away, I mean, those are, that's a great combination that you can put on your resume and, you know, you, you start giving yourself a fighting chance of getting a job very quickly. That's my logic. Um, Excel, because Excel, you, you just need to know how to use it a lot. Um, and then Python is, is my last one. It's not because I don't think it's important. It's because I think it's the hardest to learn. And so I think if you learn those first three first, you stand a much better chance of giving yourself like a really good running start to learning data analyst tools and skills um, and then learn Python afterwards. If you start, if you just jump right into Python, um, which I kind of did at one point, you can get really lost 
um, and get really demoralized. At least that's my experience. And so I recommend that one last. Now, how much time? It completely depends on how much time you can invest, right? Some people can do this in a week. Some people can do this in three months or six months. Um, if you're like spending every waking hour doing this, you can learn those first three skills, you know, in a week. Um, at least to the basic level where you can add them to your resume comfortably. Um, I think to really get a good handle on these skills, it will take at least, you know, a month or two. Um, and then if you include Python, that's an additional two months just for that one skill. So you're looking at like four months. Um, but again, every person's different. Those time frames are very much um, very much subject subjected to change, however you want to say that. I think that if you're just trying to learn the basics of each, like SQL can take you like three, three, four days to a week. Same with Tableau. Excel should not take you as long because uh, I think Excel's uh, a little bit easier. And then Python could take you like a month. So that's just a completely, you know, generalized uh, uh, answer right there. But that's kind of, that's that would be my answer. Um, moving on to the next one from Char Shaldul Shah. Uh, it says, hey, Alex, is it okay to aim for a data analyst role to bridge the experience gap that is required for the data scientist role? If yes, then what skills should the data analyst require, acquire? If no, then how to close the experience gap that is required for the data scientist role? I get asked this question a lot. I'm glad you asked this. I really do think that a data analyst role is a really good stepping stone if you want to become a data scientist. A data analyst can also be your landing step, right? It could be your final step. You are trying to achieve to become a data analyst. But absolutely, there are so many transferable skills that somebody can take from being a data analyst to a data scientist. Um, and so my answer would be yes. Um, and then you ask, if yes, then what skills should the data analyst acquire? I think that if you're just going for a data analyst role, it's going to be much different, or not much different, but a little different than if you're using a data analyst role to eventually get into a data scientist role. If you were trying to become a data scientist, my recommendation is pick up uh, a cloud platform, excuse me, because a cloud platform is going to be extremely important for data scientists because they're most likely going to be doing some data engineering, some software development um, in a way, some statistics, and cloud is kind of where almost everyone's going for that. So I would try to pick up some type of cloud platform. I use Azure, but AWS is really good. Google Cloud Platform works as well. Um, that would be one. Another one is I would say you most likely need to pick up Python. Um, if you're going to be doing machine learning or, or any anything in that realm where you're working with any data scientist stuff, Python is kind of the way to go, in my opinion. And so I would be learning Python. I would be trying to do a lot of prep work while you're a data analyst in learning those models and how to use them and how to train train your models, all the, all the things that a data scientist is going to need to know how to do. Do that while you're a data analyst, just on your free time, learn those things. And you'll set yourself up to be in a good position uh, by building a portfolio and, and really practicing those skills. So when you get into an interview for a data scientist role, you're ready. Um, so that would be the two things that I would probably focus on, as well as the obvious things like SQL, Tableau, Excel, those other things that we just talked about. I would also be learning those. So that is my two cents. Um, Akshay Joy says, hey, Alex. Could you please make a video on how to create a right portfolio for an entry-level data analyst job for someone with no experience and what all projects need to be included in it? Thanks. Yes, I 100% am going to do this. I am actually finishing up very, very soon the SQL advanced tutorials. I have like two more videos. I've already recorded one, but I have one more after that. After I do that, I will be doing uh, several projects, not just in SQL, um, but several projects just in for a portfolio. So I 100% plan on doing that. I'm super excited because so many people have asked me to do it. I just in my head had a timeline of how I wanted to do it. Um, and so maybe I'm, you know, disappointing a ton of people by it taking so long. But yes, I will 100% be doing that. Um, and for what projects are needed, um, you know, everybody has a different opinion on what project you should be showing. I think you should be doing at least doing one or two SQL ones, 
and then a Tableau one where you're showing dashboards. I would also include, if you know how to use Python, a few Python ones. Um, those are kind of like the state, the staples, right? Um, I think SQL is kind of usually left out, but I think it's more one of the more important ones for most jobs. Um, but again, not many people are doing videos on how to create a SQL um, portfolio project, which is why I want to do it, is because I want to show you guys what you should be doing, how to do it, and kind of walk you through that. And then you can use your own data set um, and, and do all of the things I show you how to do and make it your own, make it unique, and then you can have that, um, that project. And so, yes, I will be doing that. The next question is from Data Analytics World. It says, what are must-learn topics in SQL from people who are freshers or having less than two years of experience as a data analyst? If you have two years of experience as a data analyst, you should know a lot. Um, that's a, I mean, two years of experience is a lot of experience. So at that level, I mean, you should be knowing how to use CTEs, subqueries, um, you know, obviously joins and unions, you know, temp tables. Um, if you're just starting out, like if you're just trying to get hit the ground running, um, you can look at my, again, my SQL basics and then SQL intermediate. I think that's as high as you need to go. You know, learn the basics of select from where group by order by, and then learn how to use joins and unions. Honestly, if you can use that, you can do probably 80% of what I do all the time. Um, that covers about 80% of it. Then if you want to learn the more advanced things like Windows functions and all those other things I just mentioned, that's probably like the other 20% in SQL. So that's that's kind of that's kind of my thoughts on that one. Um, Alexis Moreno, 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 I don't know. If you could turn back time to when you first started college, what major would you pick? What major would you pick to start from? So what may, what may, would I change my major? Yeah, I would change my major. Um, if you didn't know, I have a degree in recreational therapy. So it's not really the most conducive to this field. I would absolutely 100% change it to computer science. I feel like if I had done that, my knowledge of computers and programming languages would be 100 times better than they are. I think I'm pretty good. Um, I really I really do understand how to use them. I just feel like that that core background knowledge that people get when they have a computer science degree is just so much more advanced. Um, they know a lot better than I do. And so I kind of, I've always somewhat in some way regretted uh, my degree because I thought I was going through a whole, I, was, I thought I was going to do a whole different thing with my life. I switched careers um, and now I'm here. I, I, I don't regret that I, I got here. I love this, this job, this field, but you know, I do regret a little bit my decision in the degree that I got. Um, so yeah, it would be computer science. Um, let's see. Let me scroll down a little bit. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, now that was the same one. I, I'm looking for this. Uh, well, here's, here's, here's actually another good one. It's from Kavitha DS. It says, hi, Alex. What's the average salary for one year experience data analyst? Um, <clears throat> so... I'm going to speak for the U.S. I, I, I know Canada and the Europe a little bit, but I obviously know the U.S. better. If you're with zero experience, you're looking at anywhere from like 45 to 50 to 60. Um, depends on where you live. If you live in like L.A., you're, I hope you would make more than that, like 90s to 100. After one year's experience, if you're making 45, let's say you're making 50,000. After one year's experience, um, and I'm just going to use 50 as like a baseline, you, should, you can be looking anywhere from about a 15 to about a 30% raise, right? So you can be looking and don't do the math on this. You can be looking anywhere from like, you know, 60,000-ish to 70,000-ish. Um, and at, when I say one year's experience, I mean, you know, a true one year's data analyst experience, I think you can absolutely get over 60,000. Um, again, depends on where you live. If you're living in the middle of nowhere in like Ohio, uh, no offense to people in Ohio, if you're living in the middle of nowhere in Ohio, you're probably not going to make that much because the cost of living is probably super low. It's not going to pay you 60,000, but relatively speaking, like if you were in Dallas, which is where I live, um, I, from speaking from personal experience, I had six months ex uh, experience with no background degree. They just, 
you know, I got that job. I was making 63,000. So I know it's absolutely possible. Um, so that is my answer on that one. Um, another one says it doesn't, it's not a question. It just says data analyst freelancing from mode Moen. Um, I, I, I don't know much about data analyst freelancing. Um, one channel to check out if you do want to learn a little bit about that is how to get an analytics job. He does freelancing. He owns his own business. Um, and so he has talked about that more than I have. And I've actually talked to him about that in an interview that I did with him. So my recommendation would just be to check out his channel. Um, there was another one in here. Oh, it's right here. I didn't even see it. It's literally right here. It's from R. Khan. It says, why are you a data analyst and not a scientist? Great question. Why, why, why just a measly data analyst and not a, a, a behemoth of a data scientist? I know you didn't say it like that. I'm just messing with you. But, um, so why am I a data analyst and not a data scientist? Um, the first thing is, is because I didn't start out, I look in this field looking to become a data scientist or anything. I didn't even know what any of this was. The data analyst career found me, right? So I'm, I'm checking time real quick. Uh, cool. The data analyst found me. And so when I found this path, I started learning everything to become a data analyst and do it better and be better in it. Of course, as I'm learning these things, I found out about what a data scientist is um, and a lot of these things that overlap. And now I'm much more established in my career. And why don't I go and become a data scientist? Why don't, you know, why don't I try to make that transition, make a lot more money um, or potentially make a lot more money? The main reason is because I don't really want to be a data scientist. Um, the, the, the things that they do, the type of work that they do on some level is interesting. I just don't, it's not for me. Uh, I much prefer, and I've said this in other videos, I've said this in Q and A's, and so, you know, you can quote me on this. I much prefer the data engineering side of things than the creating models and, and all those things. I, I really like the automation, the ETL process. Um, I like that side of things. That's, that's what I enjoy, the building data warehouses. I just, maybe my brain is more suited for that. Um, and, and, you know, I feel like I'm pretty good at math, but I, I, I don't even know if I'd be good at the math for what data scientists do. I really don't know. Um, so that's my logic. I, I, I genuinely have gotten offers or at least, you know, people are like, hey, interview for this position for a data scientist. And I've always turned them down. I don't even want to interview um, because if I got the job or if, you know, whatever, I feel like I wouldn't like it. So maybe it's just I haven't tried it and I would like it, but I'm really happy with where I'm at. I like my job. I like what I do. Maybe in the future, I'll do data engineering. I just don't ever see myself doing, you know, being a data scientist. It's just not what I personally want to do. And I have, I feel like I know that, that, that job well. I know what they do. I understand what they do. Um, it's just not for me. And so that's why. Um, that is going to wrap it up. There were other questions, but they kind of somewhat overlapped with other ones. But those are the most questions. I didn't, I might make a few cuts here and there. Um, but I tried to just kind of keep this pretty seamless throughout. Um, I love answering you guys' questions. If you have more questions, leave them down below. I'll, I'll answer your comments. Um, if I can, I'm not making a promise, but if I can, I'll answer your questions. Um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, thank you for supporting the channel and for watching these types of videos and for asking questions. I have a blast doing this and, and you guys, <laughs> I hope you guys know that, that I enjoy this a ton. Um, and so Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.